of this tutorial I will cover bombing modes, laser guided bomb employment and the ACP armament control panel. However I'd like to preface this by saying you should probably use the BDU-33 to practice. It allows you to carry 14 simulated Mark-82s without the weight, unbalance issues and you get a smoke indicator of where your bomb went. So you're loaded up with bombs and ready to go. The first steps are to select your bombs, go to menu, stores, and you can see here I have 12 Mark 82s. You can select them with the on-screen button or armament control panel at the bottom here. Next you need to choose your fusing option. Safe is inert, the bombs will not explode. You need to make sure you pick something else. They are not modelled to the best of my knowledge so anyone will do. Finally you need to choose the release mode. Currently it is an auto. You can also change it to CIP or CCIP. This can also be changed on the HUD by pressing the Uncage button. Auto CCIP. Now you might notice it is flashing. That is because I have not yet enabled the master arm. When the master arm is enabled, the flashing will stop to indicate it is ready. The first mode I'm going to show you is CCIP. So I'm going to press Uncage to switch to CCIP mode. So remember it, it is a toggle. Now I'm going to approach my target, I'm going to line up the vertical line with the approximate area of my target, I'm going to go for the one in the middle of the cross. And you can see there's no actual marker just yet. Ideally you want to sit up in your seat, or raise it up if you can't use track IR. Put a gentle dive in, you can see the cross, it's not solid yet, not solid. That's not accurate, so I'll skip that target. Now it's solid, so it'll be accurate. Pickle, pickle, and pull out. So what you saw there is the crosshair is not solid. This means it's not an accurate pipper, it's just off the bottom. If you stabilize the aircraft, it goes solid. This indicates that the aircraft is stabilised and the PIPA should be accurate. So one more example. Put yourself into a dive. Line yourself up with the target. Wait for the cross to go solid. Pickle. Pickle. And pull out. It's a good idea to drop bombs in pairs to avoid an asymmetric load. The next release mode is called Auto, also known as CCRP or Constantly Calculated Release Point. You will need a mark point from your DMT in order to use this. So we'll press the sensor select switch aft twice, locate our target with the HUD, put the flight path marker on, press TDC action, now TDC slew to bring it onto our target, we'll pick out this one. You need to aim at the ground rather than at the top of the vehicle otherwise you will find you are tracking the ground behind the vehicle. This is because it doesn't track objects, it tracks the ground. Now you can see a nice vertical line has appeared on the HUD. All we have to do is follow this line very carefully. Even a small amount of deviation will result in a miss. This is very difficult and very finicky to get right. You can see on the right hand side the time ticking down, that is the time until release. When that reaches zero, a bomb will automatically drop, provided you're holding down the pickle button. I'm not sure if it's the early access, or the system itself, that is a limiting factor, but it is very difficult to score good hits with CCRP from any altitude. So essentially all I'm doing is trying to keep that vertical line centred on my flight path and not let it drift. So you see I've gone too far, just adjust it a little bit. Gone too far the other way, again gently rolls the other way. Try and ensure your rudder is neutral before you drop the bomb, as that can throw off your aim. So 10 seconds. Slightly off. Hold down the pickle button. and released.
We're attacking again. Same setup as before, new target. Simply keep the vertical line as straight as you can. You're aiming to keep it in line with the top of your flight path indicator. I'm currently too far to the right, so I'm going to roll to the left. Now I've overshot, so a small correction. I'm going to keep it neutral, hold down the pickle button. Three, two, one, and release. So, having seen how difficult it is to employ CCRP drops accurately, you're probably wondering, well, when would you use them? Smart weapons are the perfect use for this. I'm carrying two GBU-12s. The GBU-12 is a laser-guided bomb, and it requires a laser to designate its target. It will then home in on the laser mark. Now, the Harrier is not capable, as of recording, to laser for itself. It has this functionality to do so in the future with the targeting pod. However, right now you'll need a buddy laser. In this instance, I'm going to use an AI JTAC unit. You could also use a player-controlled combined arms unit in JTAC role. An A10C with targeting pod, and in the future, a Harrier self lays or buddy lays via the targeting pod. In the meantime, I'm going to fence in. So, master arm, air to ground, Stores page, I will select my GPU-12s, set the fusing, and drop one from one pylon. Target area is there. And JTAC has called back, I'm going to be ready to copy. It's best not to get too close. You can see they're marking by laser, 1688. That is the laser code we need to make sure we have in order to search for it. So we are now ready to copy the remarks. We we'll use GBU-12. Which we have. We'll read back the nine line. We're now ready to turn into the target, so I'll report IP inbound and make a turn. I'm going to turn in. I'm now going to ask the JTAC to turn on his laser. Now I'm going to press the sensor select switch aft once and go into laser spot track. And you can see the laser code is 1688 on the UFC. Should you need to change your laser code, simply enable laser spot track and press clear, then type in the new number and press enter. However, after a while this number disappears. In order to get that back, you need to press the code on the MFT here, press clear. Type in your new number, and press enter to save it. Now all I have to do is point my nose towards the target area. There you go. It's picked up the laser mark. The camera's locked on. So now it's as simple as a CCRP drop, except this time the bomb will very definitely hit its target. I need to report into the JTAC that I have spotted the laser marker. Now I need to report that I'm inbound to attack it. Now they've given me clearance to attack the target. So once again, just follow the marker, keep it in the centre of your HUD. And about 5 seconds before release, hold down the pickle button. An added benefit of using CCRP at high altitude is you are above all the AAA and IR missile threats that might be down there at the target location. A CCIP attack on the other hand would put you straight in harm's way.
5 seconds from drop, holding the pickle down and release. Trim the aircraft out to adjust for the change in weight and let's check on how our bomb's doing. So there you go. It's fanned the laser, it's now tracking in on the target for itself. So now we are commencing a re-attack. I've kept the previous mark point on, you can see on the HUD and the MFT it's pointing, that'll make it easier for me to find the target area again. There we go, I've acquired, now you can see it is still using the previous target as designated on our last run. We need to reset our system in order to take advantage of the new targets on the report IP inbound. And I'm going to reset my laser search track with the nose wheel steering button. I'm going to reset the camera by using the sensor select switch aft twice to go back to TV and back to laser spot track mode. Turn the laser on. Going to ensure that the laser is within the field of view of the camera. There we go, locked and there is our next target. Again, I need to report to the JTAC that I have spotted it. I need to line up with my target. Report that I'm inbound. Now cleared hot to attack. Pickle. Trim myself back out again. And our bomb has acquired the laser. So we're out of munitions, and the JTAC has released us. Next, we have the armament control panel. This allows you to customise the release settings of your drops. So we set ourselves up, head to ground, stores, you can see I'm carrying 14 Mark 82s. Now I can select down here my bombs, I can select how many bombs I wish to release, how many stations I wish to drop bombs from, and the interval. However, be aware there are still some problems with this system being in early access, for example if I increment this down it's incremented that up. I believe this will still be work in progress and not all functionality is here. So the first issue I found is you'd, ex you'd expect with the information provided in the manual that quantity 3 and say multiplier 4 would release 3 bombs from 4 pylons which would drop all my sets of 3. However what it actually does is split across all the pylons. So for the time being treat this as a multiplier in the most literal sense. So I've got two bombs quantity, two times multiplier, so that's four bombs total, now it's six bombs, now it's eight bombs, you get the idea. The interval also does not currently work, it is set in feet, you simply set, set the number you want, and then press the pickle button and you should release bombs in sequence with gaps between them. For example, you could take a runway, measure the length of it, Divide that by the number of bombs, and then you can set yourself a nice interval to drop bombs across the entire length. The selective jettison, you can set that from safe to combat. Combat will jettison all, we all weapons on all stations except for the outer two stations, provided they're carrying AIM-9 missiles. This is intended for air combat. Fuel. This will select all the stations carrying fuel tanks, which you can then jettison. So jettison, simply press the button, it will then return to safe automatically. Next up you have store. This will drop stores as you select them from here. Presently it does not appear you can select individual stores, only one type of store. And finally station. This will allow you to drop selected stations individually, but it will also drop the suspension equipment with them. So in the case of the three times rig for the Mark 82, it will drop the mounting in the middle as well as the bombs. Ensure that the selective jettison is returned to safe if you wish to employ weapons. 
Finally, you have your IR cool switch. You want this on if you intend on using sidearms on Mavericks. Without this, they will not function. And with that, happy bombing. <laughs>